tu matatea, tu ramatea, te tu a papa o te matatu aotearoa. Ki runga, ki raro, ki uta, ki tai. Hoia ko te manakitanga, te whanaungatanga, te pono, me te whakamana i te ako. Haumie huie, tai ki o. E te ti e te tā e ngā iwi katoa, pena kata katoa. Nau mai ki tēnei pīringa rau huia, haere mai ki tēnei hui hui ngā kōrero. Whakatau mai rā ki tēnei tere tere ngā rau huia, maunga. Palenda tōku engoa, ka mahi au i te matatū Aotearoa, e mahi ana ki a koutou. Nau mai ki a piri, nau mai ki a tata, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Lovely to have you with us this evening. And today for our Rauhuya Symposium, we are joined by Stacey Morrison and Jonathan Hughes, and they will be exploring their understanding of the unique strengths of community and how their own leadership capability has been extended through shared leadership, management, and governance of Pasadena School. Just a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. This symposium consists of a presentation from our speakers, during which your mic will be turned off. There will be a breakout room that allows space for you to discuss the presentation, your learning and how that learning can be applied in your context. We have enlisted the service of our sign language interpreters. If you require the service during the breakout room, please let Maya know, Maya Adler, in the chat, and she'll make sure that you're in the in a room with an in, a sign language interpreter. Secondly, for display, we recommend using the side-by-side -side view of Zoom, and that will give you a view of the presentation and the presenters and the sign language interpreters at the same time. A recording of the symposium will be put onto the Teaching Council website in due course. And I'm now very pleased to introduce you to Stacey Morrison and Jonathan Hughes. Stacey is an author of the Maori language books, translator and interpreter, broadcaster and the mama of her uh, three tamariki. She's a member of the school board and the board of governors on two schools that her tamariki attained, including Waititiko Pasadena Intermediate School, where she's in her second term as board member. It is her experience on this board and as a parent of children where, who were founding members of the Rumaki unit that started in the school in 2018 that led her to co-presentation this evening with the principal, Jonathan Hughes. Stacey is also chair of the Spark Foundation, co-chair of Itangata Trust and an ambassador for Breast Cancer Foundation. Jonathan um, and Stacey will share insights and learnings from their experience as principal, parent, board member involved in establishing an innovative Maori medium program at Pasadena Intermediate. Creative community data timetable innovations and bilingual pathways are all part of the story, which they will share and will have, provide opportunity to answer questions on following the presentation. I'm going to hand over to Stacey and Jonathan now. Thank you. Kia ora. Uh, tēnā koutou katoa, e mihi ana ki te kaupapa o tā tātou wānanga i te rā nei. Uh, thank you for a wonderful introduction, Linda, and thank you for inviting us to this amazing kaupapa today. Uh, Jonathan, you didn't really get much of an intro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to... with you, Stacey, it's, uh, it's hard to complete. Carl, I'm going to make sure that we address <laughs> that. Um, but we are excited to share with you, as Linda said, uh, how we work together as a community, as a kura uh, to establish a rumaki unit in uh, central Auckland, Kahui, Ako or Waitamata. Uh, so we're going to tell you about the background, uh, how things worked, uh, really unique pedagogy, the barriers, which I'm sure you'll love hearing about, how we worked around them, and uh, the outcomes. And there's some data. If there's any data geeks, like our wonderful deputy principal, then you're, you've got something for you as well. So uh, we are going to share our screen so that, look at me taking over the, <laughs> the principal's office. You can have it. <laughs> 
Otaku here. Okay, wai titi ko Pasadena ko tēnei tō tātou kura. This is our beautiful kura, as you can see there, uh, Pasa for short, and these tamariki and their vibrancy are a great example of the type of tamariki that we're lucky enough to have here as part of our community. Uh, Kaya koe, Jonathan, he's had some coaching today. Uh, yeah, kids have been coaching really well. So yeah, tēnei koutou katoa, katoa kui a hui a mai nei, ko Jonathan toko ingoa, Te Tumuakia Ho, e te Waititiko, Pasadena Intermediate School, ki te Kwa, te Nako, ki te Kuriru, ki a Toto, e Mihi Anya, ki a Koto Kato. Kia ora, everybody. Uh, Pasadena, Principal Pasadena Intermediate School, and been here since uh, 2014, which is really exciting. Uh, funnily enough, I've been here for a long time because I was also a student here uh, a number a number of years ago. Um, so it was good to realign myself in 2014 when I come back to my local school and then still live quite close. Uh, to the school in the area so it was really quite nice and my daughter's also uh, attended the school a number of years ago as well so that community feel and obviously that connection with my family who also come through Pasadena those years ago and uh, well, obviously kids now so it's great to be uh, here and to chat to you about things and I think for a start I've never confessed to being an expert in Māori education but uh, you know, it's been nice to really work with our local community uh, and uh, to get something that's really I suppose, customised to the needs of uh, mm. the whanau in the area. Tēnā koe, e te tumuaki. I uh, just want to recognise and what Jonathan just said. Um, he's a homie, and a homie is an ally uh, in the best way. He has seen and listened uh, what's needed. And so in that way, I just want to affirm you don't need to be an expert to be <laughs> a champion uh, for Māori medium education. Nō reira, e mihi ana kia koe. O tira, uh, tēnei aku mihi mai oha, kia koto katoa, e hono mai nei, he uri ahau no ngaitahu, no te aroa hoki, uh, ko Stacey Morrison tōku ingoa, uh, toko toru waku tamariki, uh, toko rua o rāua, ko tai ke mai ki tēnei kura, ko tahi kai te toi, ko te pōtiki, ka hono mai ki tēnei kura a te ratau. Uh, so I'm from ngaitahu and te aroa, and I have two children, who have been through uh, Waititiko Pasadena. Um, my son, you can see there, um, what a coincidence that he won award day. That seems a little bit suspect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he was a foundation member when the Rimaki first started in 2018. Uh, then my daughter followed through. She's now year 10. Uh, it's an important point for me to make that they have both taken different pathways in high school um, and that's important to me because they both felt empowered to make any decision that they wanted to. So one is at Waiorea, um, still in this Kahui Airport, and one has chosen a different pathway at King's College. So to me as a parent, um, because they are first language speakers of Te Reo Māori, that balance and uh, desire to make them strong in both languages and to uphold their uh, reo Pākehā fluency um, has been something that's kind of driven us as a whānau and something that we've needed to work um, with with our schools to, to help them achieve. Right. Okay, so we're going to give you a bit of background about um, our kāhui ako, and you're the expert in this area. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really the basis of it was to, to provide a pathway for our local schools to um, go from primary to intermediate onto secondary school uh, and full immersion education. Um, previous to, to, I suppose, 2018, when we'd established our Rumaki, um, there wasn't that pathway. There was other pathways in other areas, but uh, it was definitely one of the big priorities of our, our board at the time. And even in 2014, when I got won the position, uh, we did talk about that and it seemed like a distant uh, memory or distant a long way away because um, obviously we had a few other things to sort out before we uh, organised our, our Rumaki. But, uh, in 2018, um, it was decided that uh, we put our rumaki together. Saying that, though, uh, there's a lot of groundwork done before that. Um, really lucky to have some amazing local primary schools that we could learn from. Um, and obviously, they were well-established rumaki, uh, both bilingual and full immersion uh, education, but uh, some key people, which we'll talk about in a minute. But really, for us, it was keeping us our tamariki in the local schooling. Uh, we didn't want them leaving or totaling other options. We wanted them to be able to have a full pathway from primary to intermediate and secondary uh, and full immersion education. And a number of schools there uh, offer full immersion and, and bilingual education, which is really awesome. 
Yeah, and it's relevant to m mention that there's three intermediates there, um, as Jono says, uh, different forms of rumaki as well. And just here, I want to speak about kura kaupapa, because uh, as a whānau who speak Māori at home, of course, that was a consideration and a hope for us. Uh, but if you live in any, or well, actually, I was going to say big city, but to be honest, any city in Aotearoa and Te Waipaunama, you'll know that sometimes uh, accessibility is an issue. Uh, so the school that we're actually in zone four doesn't have any Māori provision and we went and offered to help establish that because at that time my husband was an adjunct professor at Unitech uh, but that wasn't something that that school was interested in. So for me what I've taken from that and our experience here is if the tumuaki, if the principal is on board things will happen, if they're not it's a lot harder. Uh, and in terms of the kura kaupapa that's closest to us, there was a separate uh, take going on at the time in this year why we couldn't join that particular kura kaupapa. Um, but I just want to state my, my, my deep support and respect for kura kaupapa as well. Uh, what I did see here, though, in talking to Linda, was that there was an opportunity to talk about this really quite gnarly part of education in New Zealand is how do we do rumaki and how does the rest of the school get involved and and what does you know what does best practice look like for our particular community so that's what we wanted to offer you and that's what I thought could be mildly interesting Linda so we'll find out if people ask questions. Sure so I just thought I mean I thought the unique nature of our uh, of our kahui ako is that a number of we obviously offer uh, um, English pathway, but we also offer a, a full immersion or a Māori medium pathway as well, which is very unique uh, in Kahui Akos and especially in the city of Auckland. So, um, you know, while we, we, we do both, um, and we won't go too much into the details of it, but we do have arms and cross school leaders, uh, both in English medium and Māori medium, uh, as well as within school leaders in both. And we have our achievement challenges in both too. Even though it's one Kahui Ako, we have um, quite a distinct between everyone. Uh, in terms of what we do, as well as uh, same in achievement challenges and some good similarities and co collaboration between the two. Okay. Uh, and we should note there, it's always a challenge to make sure that we are providing options without sort of decimating mm. um, other schools. So that, that was definitely something that we were mindful of um, because we have three intermediates and one has a rumaki pathway. Uh, but in terms of choice, I, I do I do feel as a parent um, for proximity and for options, it's great as a parent of Māori speaking children to know that, okay, I can actually help my children choose what's going to work for them and for their particular goals and our goals as a whānau. Uh, so I'll talk about Ngāuri o Ngā Iwi uh, at Terehu in Westmere because that's where all my tamariki went and it's relevant to note that in 2014 uh, we were able to I guess look at that context that John and provided um, the MOE finally agreed to provide property funding for out of zone students and special programs because what had happened uh, and I'm sure some of you are nodding and and understanding uh, that we had tamariki who are coming to our special programs from out of zone because there's just not a provision everywhere in Auckland, but there was no property funding for those tamariki because we're supposed to go to our local school. Uh, we would, we'd love to, as I said, uh, we actually went to our local school that we're in zone for at that time and offered to help start uh, Arumaki, but that wasn't an option. So it was a frustration that was worked on um, in 2014 to see that that property funding, um, was, well, basically it was an inequity. Mm. And the uh, Minister of Education at the time was Hiki Aparata, wasn't it? Yeah. And I'm going to admit that I made my husband talk to her <laughs> and I'm not saying that was the reason why it happened but when we talk about what advocacy looks like in, in different ways and in community I do think there's a responsibility and an opportunity for people uh, like me who are you know connected in lots of different ways to our Māori speaking environment I, I thought that it was unfair um, and so we worked on it, and to the minister's credit, um, that was changed at that time. What I'm sure a coincidence. Uh, 
Um, but this was a breakthrough that coincided with an agreement to, to really grow Ngā Uri o Ngā Iwi to 80 students. And the Board of Trustees, which I was on at the time, um, was able to employ a fourth kayako. And remember, this is all pre-COVID, so life was lovely. And there were probably some slight differences in the teaching world at that point. Uh, but we have always looked at Ngā Uri o Ngā Iwi. Um, they've always been quite adaptive in terms of looking at where the numbers are and what the allotment of each class should be. Um, and then as an example of that, by 2017, Westmere had a paiarahi, uh, a leader in the space, Jane Cooper, and also a bilingual and immersion stream. Akanepea ka mōhio e tahi o koutou ki te whaia nei, you may know Jane Cooper. Jane Cooper is another example of an excellent um, ally and champion. Um, he Pākehā ia. Jane Cooper is a Pākehā teacher. Um, not that my kids would ever believe that. They know, kao, kao, by Jane. He kōrero Māori. I was like, yeah, kōrero Māori, but she's actually Pākehā. Um, and she was our paiārahi at Ngā Uri o Ngā Iwi and a real key advocate yeah. um, for this pathway. Yeah, I mean, she really believed. I mean, obviously, we had some initial informal discussions, I suppose, um, just around what we had a vision for. And at that stage, there wasn't too many specifics around things other than we were really keen to provide a pathway. Uh, and Jane was fundamental in terms of, you know, setting the scene, you know, and, and helping us in terms of moving forward at quite a rapid rate. Um, obviously, you can get some red tape here and there with the ministry and a few other people and hopefully uh, some, maybe some people from the ministry here. But, uh, yeah, it was really, really tough in those early days. And Jane was definitely um, a pathfinder in terms of helping us and, and get through a lot of hoops. And obviously, with the introduction of Stacey uh, and a few other key people in the community, it made it a lot easier uh, to establish something in a, in a pretty quick rate. But Jane was definitely fundamental in the early days of, of the curriculum, which we'll talk a bit more about later. But also, you know, having a nice um, transition from, at that stage, uh, Westmere into, into um, to our school as well. Yeah, so I remember distinctly Jane asking me to come to a hui for the Kahui Ako to the principals uh, to speak about this one gap in our Māori language pathway uh, for this particular area. And uh, so that's what I did as a parent and a board member at the time. And I remember thinking, I really need this to work um, because I, I had to look at a few different options for my son who was about to go into intermediate. Uh, and I just wanted, oh, sorry, you had a name change since then, but I just want to recognize um, where it does really help to look at all of the levers we can pull in our advocacy and, and say, well, this is actually a, a standard and an expectation of teachers across the profes profession um, to practice and develop the use of te reo and tikanga Māori and also te tiriti o waitangi because when when you don't have to have that explanation and I'll say debate in a school, then you can just um, actually hit the accelerator on things and go, if we need a reason, here it is. Um, but ideally we don't have to get bogged down in sort of stating our case of why this should be. And when teachers and principals are on board with this, it really just helps. So I remember this was a mention in our uh, one of our board of trustees trustees meetings um, but it, it really is I guess an opportunity for us to think okay how can we understand how your resources and your leadership can help us at a community level and I'm just going to put my hand up as being quite nerdy in that way so I just hope that everyone understands that that's an opportunity yeah yeah I think it also is just keep I mean the thing that we keep doing is I mean keep hitting barriers but um, in terms of we just want to put the students first and finally the decision was that we'd sort of leave some of the um, ministry rhetoric I suppose behind and just do do what we had to do with the resource that we had and obviously it was a, quite a big step and quite a costly uh, exercise for our um, board of trustees at the time and obviously we've worked around that last few years but uh, yeah it was a big step and a big um, I suppose taking a risk in terms of financially but also in terms of making sure that we uh, had what the, the local community in Fano uh, wanted. Yeah. So in terms of community voice, Jono, do you want to yeah. sort of say how, were you ready to be open to this conversation? I haven't asked you this in person, yeah. but how, how do you kind of, how does the school get ready for this conversation? Yeah, I suppose for, for me, uh, again, I, I'm not an expert, but what it was, was around what's best for our students and especially locally. Um, we, 
obviously had this in mind and part of our strategic direction of the school for a number of years. As I said before, uh, I think it was three or four years I'd been here and um, you know, obviously establishing our school uh, as it was, but also making sure in the back of our minds that we had the idea that we'd establish the Rumaki or Full Immersion Program. Um, but yeah, I said, starting with Stacey and, and Jane, who are fundamental in terms of establishing those connections in the community and listening to, to what people had to say. I mean, I suppose we didn't want something traditional because um, other schools in the local area, maybe, or in the area, were offering a traditional approach and we didn't want to compete with those schools. We just wanted to provide an alternative. Um, so really what it was, was listening. Uh, and we didn't do a lot of talking. We just did a lot of listening to, to local whānau and uh, had a, a number of hui with uh, lo local local whānau and local parents. Um, and, you know, what we had come from that was that, you know, we want high levels of Māori education, um, which obviously is really, really important to us. Um, but also what we've got from parents was that the friendships were getting very narrow. Um, obviously, some of the students had spent and Tamariki had spent years and years together. And uh, while some were flourishing, obviously, um, some weren't doing so well because they didn't have access to some of the other aspects of the school, which uh, obviously intermediate schools especially ap applies to. So we wanted to make something that all kids could come together as one, as one big school, um, but obviously learn full immersion education. We also wanted to um, use an intermediate school basis or an intermediate school approach, using the research of an intermediate school to provide, obviously, those activities for all our kids across the whole of the school, but also including our um, full immersion or our, our rumaki kids. So um, we wanted to make sure there was, you know, no one was segregated at all. Um, in fact, you know, when we first established uh, our rumaki, it was right in the centre of the school, and we did it on purpose because uh, you know, we wanted to be at our heart of our school as part of what we were. And then, um, again, that holistic approach to education. Um, obviously, all education is really, really important. It's holistic, but intermediate schools are here for a reason and really is to provide that middle, uh, the approach that you know, everything's available and that obviously why reading, writing and maths is really important. All those other subjects, which uh, most of those students would go on to do in the future, um, are available to everybody. But really, it was around making sure that it doesn't matter who you were in the school, um, you had access to every single thing. Uh, in our school, so you could provide a holistic approach to all education, um, whether it was rumaki or whether it was our mainstream classes. Yeah, because that can sometimes be a challenge at high school level as well uh, for rumaki kids to have the breadth of opportunity. Uh, so that's what has been picked up here. And I think when I look at the students in this kura, uh, across the board, they're very much citizens of Aotearoa New Zealand. And so they're having a really broad experience in their education. Uh, and just a quick mention to the research into middle school education. And we did do a visit or two, I think. Mm. Um, we can't we can't keep it for two extra years, but wouldn't mind. <laughs> yeah, well, keen to do a full, <laughs> I don't know if the local college would be that key, but uh, yeah, I mean, a full middle school would be great. I mean, I think another couple of years. I mean, obviously, some of the countries around the, around the world do have those extra two years. And sometimes, especially when you're a year eight student, uh, you're just starting to blossom a little bit more, but uh, maybe that's something for the future. Yeah, who is listening? Who has got mega powers in this conversation? Uh, so then it came to developing the vision for Arumaki, as Jono has spoken to, uh, especially to make it unique, to make it custom fitted, to make it relevant to our community. And so these are the, some of the things that were considered and established. Yeah, I mean, one of the things we did, and when we did talk to Stacey and Jane, it wasn't just a clip on the side of our school. As I said, it was in the heart of our school, and that means we all had to give up some things or change some things. And one of the first things we did really make sure it was embedded in our strategic plan. Um, so we added another extra area, which was around Māori pathways uh, for our students, um, and made it one of the integral parts, obviously, through resourcing, through um, all aspects of the curriculum, uh, to make sure we all understood stood where we're going and, and where we're heading. Um, and one of the unique things we want to make learning fun it was really important for us um, that we didn't have our one of our students in our mainstream classes or our English medium classes doing all these amazing inquiry learning, teaching through maths approach. Yet in our rumaki, the kids were sitting there and learning in a traditional sense. So one of the things, and it goes down to obviously our staff, which we had amazing staff, which we'll talk about in a minute, um, that there was constant um, yeah, development of resources as well as um, yeah, a, a approach or a, a lens over our um, Pasadena curriculum, a Māori lens over our Pasadena curriculum, so all the kids could learn in the same way, but just different content. And uh, if you walk, walk into the classes today, you'll see, you know, there's students inquiring, and just on the right there, there's, a, there's our inquiry cycle, exactly the same as our 
English medium classes, but in Māori and so they learn exactly the same way. They learn through a mixed ability approach. They learn through differentiation. They learn through collaboration. And that was really, really important to us that everyone learned in the same way, the same pedagogical approach. We're still understanding of first, first uh, language acquisition, which was really important, which kept in the back of our mind the whole way. It was really important for us that uh, it was fun and it was cool to learn in those ways. And obviously one of the areas we did have problems with was resources. Uh, it's getting a little bit better now, but uh, we had some amazing oh, amazing translator that helped us, Donovan, along the way, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, speaking of, <laughs> of who, <laughs> uh, speaking of which, um, our foundation, Kayako, was obviously really key here. And one of those nervous moments you have yeah. where you go, okay, we've got the vision, build it and they will come. And we need the spectacular Kayako. And we're very fortunate that we found him. But I, I will <laughs> say as well, I think his development uh, mm -hmm as a teacher has been a joy to see. Uh, he just uh, actually taught as a kurareo uh, teacher for the first time, which he said was a bucket list um, item for him. So he achieved that in the last school holidays in Rotorua. Uh, so that kind of, um, I guess, development in a, in a kayako is, is beautiful to see as well. Um, now, if we talk about Te Ahunui, um, Donovan Farnham, um, he has, you know, excellent Māori language um, capability and teaching ability. He has a background in kura kaupapa, which I think is really relevant. Um, so he was at Te Raki Pai Whenua before coming here um, and very, um, very dexterous and able to work across different uh, marautanga, different curriculum, but also obviously had that um, mind for thinking of how do we build something new. Um, and an understanding of those both worlds. So it had to be resource, as you said, Jono. Um, and I think one of the, the really meaningful things for me to see quickly, and I didn't push for this, Jono just did it, uh, was elevating our kayako to leadership position in the SLT um, as soon as humanly possible, I believe. Yeah, it was pretty quick. After a year, I think, once he got established, he was uh, brought in. But yeah, I mean, one of the, I suppose, the things that I talked to Donovan about, and in that stage, I suppose Donovan, if he was here, um, he would say he was a little bit reluctant because it was first sort of dipping his toe uh, into English medium uh, education. And obviously, I don't know if he'd had great experiences of that and thought it was going to be a fight. So one of the assurances I made him from the start that there would be no fight for everything, that you get everything you needed. Um, and that was really important. And obviously, it happens still today. So in terms of resourcing, in terms of property, in terms of everything you need, um, yeah, it's there. And uh, we didn't, never, never wanted to be a fight. So that was really important for us. And then obviously bring Donovan onto our senior leadership team. Um, one, obviously, to make those uh, amazing um, uh, decisions with us, but also, also to keep us uh, on our toes, I suppose, and, and constantly reflect on what we were doing as a whole school. Uh, and we'll talk a bit more about that later. But, uh, you know, the transformation as a school uh, has been quite uh, significant as well. But uh, just have a good understanding of both worlds and how we can work in the same way. I think that's really key because many times I've seen kaiapu who are carrying the equivalent of an SLT position, but they're not recognised for it. They don't have the job title. They don't have the subsequent units and pay. Uh, so for me, uh, this just happening because it was a genuine desire um, from the principal was chef's kiss. Perfect. Um, but there were challenges and um, the innovation required was quite huge and, and you'll best to speak to this, Jono. Yeah, I mean, we want to do something different. As I said, um, we talked about what we got from our whanau and one of the things we were was that to establish uh, relationships right across the school, we need to do something different. And obviously an element of uh, Māori medium education, 80% full immersion and obviously 20% um, English, we needed to um, establish a different timetable. And one of the rules we always had from the start was that the timetable didn't for the school the school rule the timetable so that was a little bit tough but it uh, seems so easy now but at the time it was actually hard to come up with but so we had some pretty amazing dps uh, and that you know looked through some alternatives but really it was around how can we provide english medium or english education um one of the sort of non-negotiables was there was no english in our in uh, our rumaki classes so obviously that was quite challenging because from a traditional sense you learn um english in the rumaki class as you would Māori medium. So what we ended up coming up with, and again, it seems so easy now, but it was actually quite hard to come up with that. All our kids students would go to uh, English medium classes for literacy. Um, again, seems so easy, but it actually was quite hard to come up with. So through a, in literacy classes, there's a number of things. One, they obviously get taught uh, English in a, in a differentiated approach. 
uh, two, they'd gather friendships right across the school and which has really, really blossomed um, to this day. I mean, I think one of the testaments of our school, if you walk through our school, you couldn't see who our Rumaki kids were because it's just all one big school playing together and doing things together, which is really exciting and really cool and a good mark for us that we're doing the right thing. Uh, and then third is obviously to make sure that they were aware of other teachers in the school and to create those relationships as an intermediate school, uh, not just with Odukako, but also uh, some, some other mainstream teachers. So that was really, really important. So we had to be really flexible with the timetable uh, and it was pretty pretty challenging uh, at times and as the school's grown, which we'll talk about in a minute, but it's been even more challenging because uh, we want to make sure that our room can get all those opportunities you talked about before, but uh, aren't sort of governed by our timetable. Yeah, and as a parent, to see my tamariki, whose first language is Māori, engaging in an English class for the first time with different students was uh really interesting for me and I saw their confidence grow and their bilingualism as being valued at that point which doesn't always happen believe it or not mm. <laughs> um, so that uh, dexterity of being able to work within two languages was actually seen it was given status which uh, is really important for a child's perception of their own language and the value of their heritage language uh, but also for them to know that the level of English that they are acquiring and working in is the same as their peers. So they don't need to worry about having a deficit. And they know that they, they are good at English as well. Um, on the funding one, was there anything we needed to add on that? Because I think there, there was a, you had to move before um, the higher gods of the ministry were ready to. Yeah, we did approach for the innovation fund. Uh, to try and get some extra funding because obviously with our um, uh, our students, our, main, our, our mighty medium students in our mainstream classes that created quite big classes, which uh, wasn't that easy to start with. But um, yeah, we did apply and uh, tried to work with the ministry. As I said, I found it quite a rigid model. And obviously in our community, I'm not saying every community want this, but in our community, our whanau was speaking and this is what they wanted. But the model that to, through the staffing and through resourcing uh, didn't really meet our requirements and we kept hitting a brick wall so in the scene in the end I remember having a meeting with everybody and said I think we'll just do this and it's going to cost us a little bit of money and a little bit of time but um, and I was really just selling that vision to the rest of our school as well I mean right from the start where I was really really lucky that uh, everybody could see right across the school and you know our parents and whanau as well as uh, our teachers that this is going to be the best thing for our kids and it, it meant having three or four or three teachers uh, three extra kids in your class um, they were happy to have that and obviously they looked at the positives, the half full rather than the half empty and what the vibrance and what sort of culture they were bringing to, to the classes. And it was amazing how uh, students and teachers could grow by just having our Māori medium kids in their classes. And obviously it was great, especially in those early days to walk through and you know everyone introducing themselves and learning Māori and kids, our, our mainstream kids trying to learn through that. So it was pretty, pretty awesome and, and pretty amazing to see. And obviously as that's grown through the school, as we've got more classes, obviously a lot more students, uh, our Māori medium students in our mainstream classes. Yeah, and one thing that I don't hear spoken of a lot is sometimes when you have a rumaki within a school, parents of kids in the English medium feel a bit like, well, I want my child to learn too. And I know that Fire Jane was doing classes across um, the whole school to bring everybody in. So that feeling of everyone is learning a little bit mm. and everyone is meeting each other wherever they are, I think is, is quite powerful. It's just how do you manage that? Mm. And as you've said, it sort of takes some innovation. I suppose, sorry, just one more thing, Stacey, there. I mean, the, the positive, again, the, of that was when our students went to our um, Māori medium students did go to our mainstream classes to learn literacy, that enabled our um, uh, kaikou to be uh, to, to, to be available. So what it provided was a differentiated approach for all the whole school in Māori medium. I mean, we'd funded um, Māori medium, right, uh, sorry, Māori education at a, at a basic level right across all the classes, but it was pretty pretty basic. But what this enabled our students to get, um, if they were interested in, and if the family and whanau were interested in, was what we called a bilingual approach. So three or four blocks a week, so uh, four or five hours a week of um, full of, well, bilingual education. So our um, kaika who were teaching our, our Māori medium, were actually uh, teaching our mainstream kids as well, which was really popular. I think we started with five kids and by the end had about 40. Uh, and that still continues today, and a lot of them go on, actually, even from our mainstream to, to learn in a uh, Māori medium or, or bilingual um, school up at uh, Wairia, up in Western Springs. Yeah, and it's important to note that some of our kids who have made it here to Rumaki, uh, they came from bilingual, but it 
we have to always look after uh, the expectations and also, um, I guess, levels of real. So this is what I thought was worth sharing in terms of the enrollment um, criteria. Um, and so it's um, important to note that it's full immersion, obviously, and they also have access to English. Now, that's a key part because parents in this area and tamariki can make decisions um, on what option they're choosing. So I think this is good transparency. Uh, and also to note that they'll be able to be involved in the specialist programs as well. Um, and because it is a special program, there is this particular criteria. Uh, then just some key details about the levels of the classrooms and level one full immersion. <clears throat> um, and then in terms of the the consultation with Board of Trustees, I mean, really, you are always monitoring that, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, obviously now we've got, I mean, in the early days, it was a little bit tougher because we didn't have the numbers. And I suppose I remember opening the doors for the first time. We weren't sure anyone was going to turn up uh, besides Stacey's son. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, now it's great. I mean, obviously, we've got that great relationship through our Kahui Ako and that transition is really strong. Um, and uh, the numbers, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, I mean, I think one of the other things to point out is that our first criteria is around uh, language acquisition. And that's really, really important for us. All these other things there. So, um, you know, while there's all those other things going on, uh, high levels of Māori education is first and foremost in terms of what we do. Uh, and we have quite a rigorous process where we go through. Um, it's really nice. We have a number of um, uh, people that apply and obviously um, more than we can cater for. So we have to be very rigorous with our process. And uh, over those years, we've developed that, I think, in a really good state and through our self-review in terms of even the way that, um, the Kaiko, uh, do the do the interviews. Um, we go into schools now, uh, in the local schools, and make sure that the students are comfortable. I mean, the whānau are invited. Um, likewise, if they'd like to come here, do it individually, do it as a group. So um, that's something we learned along the way that they were very daunting for students and, and whānau to have this. And for the first time, obviously, it sort of seemed like a test, and even though we didn't want to make it a test, um, but we've really reflected on that approach, and we wanted to get our students that obviously had the higher levels of Māori language um, the other thing was we always, you know, wanted to make sure that siblings and obviously ex-students, so we did sort of that whole pathway for them. And then also our, our uh, kahui ako was really important to us and to provide um, that pathway for our local students in our kahui ako. Yeah, so this priority um, and kind of the enrollment process has been really relevant, hasn't it? Because yeah, it's been good. now we're at a position where people are applying for more positions than are actually available. Um, so that has been refined and, and just to total just to support what Jono said about those adjustments that are made by having say a group interview inside the school that they're already used to has been really helpful for a lot of the tamariki. Um, now self-review that is teacher speak so <laughs> you, you can do that. I think one of the good things and I suppose of the whole school is our review process and we want to carry that over to our rumaki and just head I'm definitely not an expert in Māori education, and I know Donovan, would, first of all, he's an expert in Māori education, but probably not an expert of Māori education working in an English setting. So um, right from the start, we wanted to use self-review and uh, obviously high levels of data. So obviously as a school, we used EASTA and those other things across the school. So we transformed that to make sure that our rumaku was also data rich and uh, having a board with Stacey on, she always demands that we make sure we have uh, plenty of data there, Stacey. So yeah, and but also the analysis of the data was really important. So if kids were struggling a little bit, we had um, transition programs or specific programs. So we had learning support programs in Māori, we had external people, RTLB coming in, and even the case of uh, some of the times where some of the kids were out of the classroom, we could bring them back in and work one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two with our, with our rumaki teachers. Um, it was very important that yeah, we're constantly checking in with our whānau as well, constant hui's, uh, constant surveys, um, and we have made tweaks over the, the years around things. Um, you know, one of the things we did find was that it was really daunting for our Māori medium students to go into English medium classes, um, and I suppose the first year, we just had a group of amazing students, to be fair, and they were just achieving all over the place. Going, How easy is this? But um, <laughs> yeah, it was as the years went on, and we actually said, hey, we need that transition program for our kids of going in to, to our English medium classes. So what we ended up doing was budding year sevens and year eights together to help that transition a lot more and finding out actually it wasn't as daunting, you know, as it was. And, uh, you know, it can work really well. And you obviously, as we talked about, you can make uh, friends right across the school as well as learn. doesn't matter if you're just picking up English for the first time or in the English class for the first time, you know, you can still learn through a differentiated approach as well. And obviously those uh, self-review go right through the school. 
uh, and the board and as part of our review process we've got um, board board processes as well that we review everything and asking the hard questions of how do we know our kids are learning yeah uh, so that's just a slide to to reference that in good old school docs and <laughs> uh, just noting that you know we have Maori students who are not in the rumaki as well but obviously they are um, umbrellaed here as well and, and part of our consideration um, <clears throat> in terms of this um, self-review obviously student voice is important um, and and key and always interesting because <laughs> you can't you can't know what they're going to say. Um, but just to read this here, pai kia hau, te ko fitting a fire, motu kopa pafano, hika kana hau kite pakahire taku ake ako. Um, so that they can choose their own project or focus with a kopapa and uh, pakidehua, especially so that's the inquiry based learning really working for them. And then just me and, and looking at the state of their reo and going, oh yes, kapai, tinopai, tinopai te reo, very good uh, language skills there. Um, now we have a student voice. So we can, can we do we need to make sure everyone can hear? Hopefully they can hear it. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, the things that I like about the school is that um, I get to express my culture. So I'm a Marumaki, I've been, I'm a year eight, I've been here for two years and I've really enjoyed it here. Um, you get to do the few things that you get to do here is that you get to do literacy four times a week, which is very fun because you get to um, meet a bunch of new people um, and make more friends. Um, and also, you get another teacher for your literacy class. Um, or you also have um, clubs and extensions that you can join. Uh, you also have um, specialist classes, which um, are really fun. Um, you have music, tech, uh, cooking, and art. Uh, personally, I joined MasterChef this term. Um, and while well, last year, I did sign up and I got I won. So that was an um, amazing experience. Um, you also get to... Um, for any culture you get to use as a week, um, which is, for example, I'm a student leader, so I got to help plan for Māori Language Week, um, which was very fun. We had multiple, there's different languages that we celebrate here, um, and it's just amazing to see everyone um, express their culture. So thank you. Bye. That is the first time I've heard that students speak uh, English and it's yeah. like, oh, lovely. Her English is great too. <laughs> yeah, see no point. Um, so in terms of data, and as I was talking about um, one of the deputy principals being a particular monster on this in the best kind of way, um, but just looking at the acceleration data, and I'll just, the part I'll offer here is if you don't know, Pānui is reading, and Tuhi Tuhi writing, Pāngaro uh, being maths. Um, but you're probably best to speak to yeah. this. Yeah, like, I mean, for us, right across the school, it's around, I mean, we, everyone comes in at different levels, but what is acceleration? And the definition we use of acceleration is someone that goes past a year, year's growth. Um, so obviously we only have two years at Pasadena or an intermediate school. So we want to make sure that everyone's growing those two years and right across the school, but especially in our room market, we can see that if students spend those two years at Pasadena, they have accelerated growth. So as the graph leads to, um, it's really, really important that we measure that growth uh, and we can see it. Um, and we know the names, we know the, the numbers uh, that are associated with all those types of things. So we know it's been successful. Uh, we know it's working. Um, we measure both our Rumaki students, obviously, in Māori, but we also measure their, their progress uh, in, in English as well. Um, and that obviously, as Stacey alluded to before, learning both languages at the same time, they made major um, inroads and, and acceleration in both languages really which is really exciting and obviously goes to show that learning uh, those two languages and obviously learning a, a full immersion with our English uh, is obviously an amazing approach and something that really works for us. Okay and because we talk about holistic educa uh, education it's it's relevant to speak to their well-being and how they're feeling, our karia roto, uh, their feelings about uh, from all of the kids in the rumaki. Uh, so here they are feeling, oh, is it showing everyone? Oh yeah, the green zone, happy and focused. 
uh, content and ready to learn is the largest percentage there uh, for our tamariki and the rumaki. And there's lots of lots of check-ins through the year on their well-being. Yeah. So it's a big part of the school is obviously making sure all our students are, are happy. Um, I think like any school, if you're happy, you learn. So um, we're constantly measuring what we do and, and making adjustments if we need those. Um, we're also a PB for our school. So if there's some adjustments we make, um, obviously the data that shows maybe there's something that we need to work on, uh, we do um, specific lessons on those, obviously in Māori um, for our Lumaki kids as well. So if there's something that in particular is coming out, uh, both good and bad, um, we can uh, look to target those areas just like we would uh, normal data. And just wanted to make a point to the ongoing growth in our fantastic Kayako uh, Keegan, uh, who Kai Keegan was at Westmere, and I was not responsible <laughs> for any poaching. <laughs> um, I promise, cross my heart. Um, but I'm very excited that my Potsiki, my youngest, will get to be with Faya Keegan again next year. Um, this is actually one of her graduate profile um, pieces, um, but it is. I guess a good opportunity to say that there are three classes with three kayako um, and you can see the growth there and the student numbers uh, and I do I do I can say hand on heart that there's strong options to head into secondary school have meant that uh, tamariki go to all basically all forms of options from here so we have some who go to farikura uh, some who go to waioria immersion or other immersion schools and some who go to english medium uh, so that is just, uh, to me, shows that they can, they can sort of express their agency and what they think is going to work for them and they appear to be well prepared uh, wherever they go. And for me, the reason that it is, is because it's in Ahuru Mowe. It's a real safe haven uh, for our tamariki. They feel um, valued. These pictures uh, <laughs> sort of show these kids who are in, you know, English medium there. There are kids who have gone on to, you know, they're still friends for a very long time. And I just think that they are experiencing something quite special, uh, something that people have worked hard to maintain. As Jono says, um, sometimes it's easier than you think once you've done it. <laughs> um, but I, I'm very proud of the fact that it's uh, responsive to the community not just me, even though I may be one of the louder voices, um, it really is, you know, an opportunity um, that I'm very grateful that the, the kura has taken up. No reira, uh, ka mutui konei, ka māua kōrero, so we'll finish here and lead you to the breakout, if that's right. Um, Linda, that's over to you. Oh, thank you so much for sharing with us your perspectives, your, um, your journey. Um, and that clear leadership that's shared between um, community with m great mama uh, who are willing to speak up for the children um, and willing to take that step <clears throat> to support that community by standing on the board, by being a little voice in an ear um, and having a principal like you, Jonathan, who is willing to hear that voice and, and say, what can we do? To, to make a difference here? What can we do to make sure that our community is supported? Um, and clear how that you've grown that connection, found ways to achieve that shared vision um, and made sure through that collaborative approach uh, that you've found the support, you've made it work um, and continue to do so. Um, this, yeah, thinking about that leadership capability framework, how strong those links are, how visible that leadership is, um, and what that might look like in action. When we're thinking about management of resources, um, aligning with vision, te triti o waitangi, all of those pieces come together there. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so I'm gonna um, sign this off into breakout room, group, groups now, um, and you've been there for about 20 minutes. You'll be um, have an opportunity to speak to other teachers and leaders from around the country, possibly around the world. We had other people from other countries last time, so it was very exciting. Um, and I'll give you an opportunity to meet some teachers, have a conversation, a little time to think about um, Stacey and Jonathan's Kōrero this evening, what resonated with you, um, what your sort of key takeaways might be, and, and how that might look in your context. Um, 
But also after that, um, Jonathan and Stacey have offered to answer any questions. So if you have time to think of a, a question that you might want to an have answered, um, when we come back in, um, we'll open the chat and you can pop your questions in there and we'll do our best to get, get through a few of those. Um, but yeah, if Maya's going to sign us off into our breakouts now. So Maya and Ottilie, thank you. I think that's everybody back now. Um, thank you um, again for um, joining us and for um, sharing your your own perspectives in, in the breakouts. Um, and next, I'm just wondering if there's some questions. I know that we had some in our group. Um, if there's any questions that you would like to ask, if you could pop them in the chat and we will do our best. I'm going to ask one of um, Stacey and um, Jonathan while we're, while we're waiting for those messages to come into the chat. Um, we had one in our group just around um, how you how you support your Kayako in the Rumaki to continue to grow rail capability. We were quite lucky. I mean, we talked about Donovan, who has a high level of language acquisition, and he's actually not teaching <laughs> full time now. He's uh, doing a lot of translation. Obviously, the world's his oyster with all those skills, but. What has enabled us to, him to do is come in a couple of days a week and help our uh, Kaiko and really, um, I mean, help with translation of resources, but also help with um, language acquisition, um, which has been really amazing because it's all differentiated for the individual. Um, the other thing is our Kahui Aku provides uh, professional development um, at various levels related to achievement challenges, which works out quite nicely as well because we sort of get that flow and effect from primary, intermediate to secondary, um, but also the opportunity for teachers to, I mean, I know today, um, Keegan was on a course today doing some stuff in terms of just trying to upskill as much as they can. But uh, yeah, I think it's just a multifaceted approach really in terms of that. And they've all got goals around different aspects of their learning as well as um, language acquisition. So we're quite lucky that um, we have been at a higher, quite high levels of uh, Māori language uh, when we have advertised positions, which is great. Mm, yeah, I know that's not, you can't always take that for granted, but yeah, yeah we have got highly fluent teachers, um, but te ahu o te reo, um, that's, mm. that's gone really well, and mm. I know that even our fluent teachers have been going at their higher level, mm. um, and it's very, you know, high, more technical and, and high standard of uh, learning for people who are already fluent, so that's worked as well. Yeah. Hi. Um, the other other part of that question was around when you have um, sort of that assessment for entry into the unit and how you support um, tamariki who are maybe just there but need a little mm. little push to be able to confidently engage in that learning. I mean, we had some great successes over the time. I think it's not me; it's uh, part of that, but. Um... Yeah, what happens is really is we, I mean, we go through a rigorous process and um, if they're on sort of the cusp, I suppose, of getting in, we meet the whole whanau and come up, set up with a, a whole whanau approach to, to Māori uh, language acquisition. Um, and it's been really successful. And this year we've had, I think, three um, whanau who are you know, very, very close to coming in, but probably just didn't reach where they were. And we've had quite big hui's with them and uh, put things in place, both in school and outside of school, to support the whole whanau in terms of that. Māori acquisition and it's historically worked really, really well and historically been successful uh, for Fano who've really bought into it. So we want that whole holistic approach, not just uh, the child coming to learn at our school, but the whole Fano as well. And it's been really successful. Yeah, that was one slide I forgot to put in and actually because we've run Wananga here yeah. uh, with us and and Donovan, so for Fano and so that everyone can kind of upskill a little bit to support the video at home, uh, which mm. is quite but hard to get access to when parents are busy and working mm. and trying to upskill themselves. Often they are kind of um, giving their tamariki something they haven't had themselves. Mm. So um, that is something that we, we have done and, and will continue to do. Um, but also, I guess, I've, I've seen that happen with tamariki and they, the whānau comes up with a plan and the school supports the plan of how are we going to get through um, and, and make sure that they're at a high level of fluency so that they can participate in the rumaki. And one thing that I would say is just, just building wider understanding that um, at year seven and eight, that's really possible mm. because I find that people do make a decisions 
uh, a decision around intermediate, they either think, oh, well, they've been in immersion till then, so they've got the deal. But um, what I've seen is that it can easily be lost, especially if it's not mm. the first language of the home. Um, and also that then they might go, oh, um, you know, we, I'm not strong enough here, so I'm going to leave the Māori medium pathway at that point, and then it's hard to get them back. Yeah, um, I've got a question here in the chat. I think Josie, I think you possibly answered Josie's question, which was around that support um, expect, expectation for whānau from home. Um, just one around that kahuiako <clears throat> sort of um, having that strong commitment is visible in your kahuiako sort of direction and the PLD that you've agreed to as a as a group. Um, just wondering if there's uh, any early childhood centres included in that ropu and how how yeah. how they join in. Unfortunately, not because it's just so big. Yeah, I mean that's obviously our next logical step. Um, yeah, I think we're the second biggest kahuiako in New Zealand at one stage. I don't know if we are now, but it was just, we're getting to be unruly in terms of that. I mean, we always had that in mind, but uh, just with the numbers and obviously we've got 13 different schools, uh, both in, in, in English medium and Māori medium, it's sort of been very tough, I suppose. And one of the things we're understanding of is to make sure that, you know, we're not spreading ourselves too thin. So uh, I know there's been a couple of uh, um, approaches from uh, early childhood centres, but uh I'm not one of the leads at the moment, but uh, I know something in the future we're definitely looking at is sort of that wider from sort of ECE to, to college and right through the whole process of schooling. Yeah, that journey. Um, Jackie's got a question here around how did you manage some of that unconscious bias uh, um, that sits within that wider um, community or within your um, staff? Um, it might not have been as easy as it easy as it sounds like how did you manage that sort of tension i think it was just that vision i mean having a vision that wasn't just sort of a one hot, hot thing that we're sort of getting on board because we think it's really good today and maybe not in the future mm -hmm. but um you know we sort of embedded in everything we did and i suppose mm -hmm. as I said before it was half full rather than half empty you know while we're having a rumaki and all that type of thing what it's going to add to the wider school mm -hmm. um you know, obviously why teachers i mean i didn't get too much negative feedback to my face but maybe behind my back but uh, <laughs> having a couple of kids in their classes that you know, are going to add numbers, but really it was around what they're going to add rather than what they're going to take away. Oh, yeah. mm. We've been really lucky. I mean, this is the norm now. It was, it was a tip, we come past the tipping point. It's just what we do and our teachers understand it. And when new teachers come in, they under, have an understanding is that our, um, our Māori medium students or our Rumaki students go go to, to English medium uh, for our mm. um, literacy. So, yeah, and it just works really, really well. And um, again, half full rather than half empty and um, having that because it's in, sort of incorporated or in, entwined into what we do it's just the norm really uh, in the early days i suppose it was just really and i was quite lucky because we started with quite small numbers and i suppose we we're more maneuverable but yeah again it was just around those types of things and you know developing those relationships right across the school mm. uh, and looking to combine that so not just what we're going to give but also what we're going to get and that was really exciting as well mm -hmm. i will say i guess um when john i started 2014 and then the gap is to when we started the rumaki 2018 i think in that time from what i can tell you uh developed a culture of the mm -hmm. school that was was different from how it was before mm -hmm. that's what i've been told um and so therefore people who who weren't going to be on board with this and and do have more natural bias i I don't, I didn't see them at no. this school. Yeah. So I'm saying he changed the, the culture yeah. of the school a little bit, I think. Yeah. I suppose it's well, again, mm. culture in terms of what we do and how we do things. And, yeah, you know, we're here for all our kids across the school. And, you know, obviously that middle school education, obviously an English medium, but also a Māori medium as well, which um, seemed to work really, really well, which is, um, yeah, I mean, it's just mm. pretty lucky our teachers. I mean, again, in the early days, it wasn't so easy, but, uh, you know, as Stacey alluded to, just developing that culture of sort of, self-review and, and being what's best for our students and always putting them mm. first. Mm. Yeah. Also, I, the, the, yeah. The fact of the kids being quite integrated has helped that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, and I've seen a bit of us and them um, in school sometimes when it comes to a whānau unit or rumaki. So I think the integration helps that. Um, so where bias is, it's no longer unconscious because it's mm. right there. So you yeah. have to work with it. <laughs> Um, and, and work through stuff, yeah. I had the privilege of being in a breakout room with somebody who worked at Pasadena a number of years ago. Oh. And she was just commenting on how far 
how different it sounds and how far things have come. So I think that's a, a good reflection on the on that change that it has had an impact. So it's lovely to she's like, oh, it's so exciting to see the changes. Um there's one one other question I had which was around um sort of that building success across, like it was uh, thinking about you, Stacey, and your unwillingness to give up, I suppose, um, your persistence as a as a mother. And we have uh, we have parents who come all the time and have a great idea, but quite often they they won't have the courage to to step into that space and and make an appointment or or to to put the name forward. Or, um, yeah, so it's just making sure that, um, yeah, understanding how you, how you find that courage, I suppose. Um, yeah. um, well, my husband says I just can't say no, <laughs> but um, I guess it's it's a few, yeah. I I, I just recognise that it feels a bit um, privileged, you know, like I'm I'm fortunate that I have. Um, some freedom to do things like that and I mean that in terms of time and capability and I guess willingness as a whānau so there is an aspect of it that I just think that we should do because of the nature of say my husband's books or my books and <laughs> so I just kind of think that that's that's part of it you've got to walk the talk really um and also that but but between the two of us he doesn't love meetings and so it was going to be me <laughs> who's going to do it so you know you've got to kind of go okay I I you know ask him to come in for like the the wānanga and for stuff like that you know work to your strengths that's part of it but um I'm always mindful that it's it's a matter of this is what I can do right now but I might not always be able to do it and and to be honest recruiting um other whānau <laughs> yeah yeah. So um I, I was, yeah, yeah. I, I think there's a second. yeah. There's a I couple of board questions I, in there. Yeah, I did there's one there's around one. ensuring Titriti doesn't sort of rest on the shoulders of those uh, Maori Kayako and that it, there is a sort of shared responsibility across the school. Mm. I'm just wondering how how that responsibility sits, I suppose, and, and that upskilling Tereo and Tikanga across. And we've got amazing resources, obviously, here. I mean, obviously, for our students, but also for our staff. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's obviously it's, it's embedded in what we do in terms of our strategic plan. Um, and everyone's learners. Um, we have goals across the school uh, for Māori language in terms of acquisition for, for staff as well. Um, but the kids, I, you know, I've just... I learn off the kids all the time. I think the kids, the kids are the biggest teachers, to be fair. And uh, when they do go to the, to the our mainstream classes, I know they're constantly talking to teachers and teachers asking them questions about things and how do you say this? And the kids are sitting next to them and saying, oh, what's the word for this and all this type of thing. So, I mean, I think the biggest for us has been the kids and constantly talking to the kids. And I know for me, I mean, Donovan does a bit, quite a bit of coaching with me, but, uh, you know, the kids quite often pop in and give me some feedback on things or tell me how to do things. And, and uh, yeah, you know, they're amazing learners as well. Yeah, I enjoy um, watching children give you feed, give adults feedback and they're always so kind. There's so much kind of it. <laughs> um, but no, it's a really good point because that does happen. I've seen it happen. We go, oh, you do mm. tiriti. And it's That's like, and it's mm. very nature and existence. It's a partnership. So um, I guess at a board level, what I see is, um, you know, we've got good uh, Māori representation for one thing. Um, there is uh, freedom in that we don't have to, you know, always explain uh, because people are pretty on board and pretty, um, I, I guess, interested and engaged and it's very natural to them. So that's part of school culture, but also board culture. Jono did make me be the chair, like you have to own <laughs> up to that. That wasn't something I was really planning for. Um, so, you know, we, I think at a, at a board level as well, that's really, um, it's been something that I have felt supported in. So I'm not just always the, the Māori voice going this and that. And I'm always thinking of kids right across the school mm -hmm. as well. That's important too. Um, and that's also why I guess, you know, on the other school um, board of governors that I'm on, that gives me understanding and insight to work with this school as well. So I guess that's kind of the professional de development in a different way that I was thinking about, yeah. No, but I really like your point, Jackie, because I've seen it happen a lot. Mm. Mm. 
I, I'm just, I might, we might have time for one more question before we have to close this evening, because I know um, all of you teachers will be needing to get home to your families. And um, so I've just I've noticed there, I've got a question there from Josie. So Josie has, uh, is a principal uh, in uh, Kura, and she has Rumaki from years one to eight and, and has noticed a sort of decline in the um, capability of children coming in and families are busy and they don't necessarily have that same level of support they used to have to be able to engage. I think you've made, touched on that earlier, but she, it's just how do you protect that immersion space um, so that te reo oh. is the language? Yeah, no, it's a massive issue mm. and it's frustrating as well when the kids stop speaking mm. Māori as soon as they come out of the classroom. I'm not not so much, I haven't been here for a couple of years, but I um, mean, you know, kids who are, you know, fluent. Um, so, and Josie, I guess you've probably noticed as well what impact COVID's had with that, um, with just general stress and, and parents, if they do have some real, not having that extra headspace to, to use it at home. So I do think that there's an opportunity for, all of us to look at how we can um, how we can help that because it's definitely an issue. One of the things I think is for for parents to understand that I mean when we come into Kohanga, when we come into Kurukopa, but there's an expectation that the deal's spoken at home, and I think it gets a bit weaker in um, an English led uh, English medium school because people sort of go, oh, the school's going to do that. So we do as parents and as communities, I think, need to. Um, with aroha, um, be honest about that uh, because it's not fair for us as parents to go, okay, you teach the Māori. And so, I mean, that's what we, it's a whole kaupapa, I guess, if you look at um, the Mātāwai, kia ukaipua no te reo for the reo to really be the, the sustaining origin language, then we have to find ways to support parents to do that because it's hard. You're working with their language trauma. Um, they're not going to... It, it's not easy to learn, not everyone can have time in their day to learn, but I guess what I sort of tend to say to parents is the status of the language is what you can uplift mm. by any, you know, using Māori every single day in a tiny way actually tells the child that it's valued. Um, and then if the school backs that up, I do think it's fair to ask um, a bit of whānau for them mm. to support and upskill as well. Like, as I say, we've run those wānanga here um, but I do think sometimes um, parents don't understand what a big load they're putting not only on the, the kura but also their tamariki if they're not supporting at home. But it's just, as I say, you've got to have aroha about it because it's it's not fault their fault that they're in that situation. And I recognise my my privilege of being able to uh, reclaim te reo Māori as an adult. So, yeah, take tino nui. It is hard is hard and um, we will need to work together and I think the ahua te reo for parents <laughs> will probably be mm. helpful too mm. and I know some parents have snuck in to yeah, some of those which I support yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, excellent I'm going to have to stop there I'm afraid um, uh, thank you everybody for taking this opportunity to connect with us um, today and hopefully you'll head back to your kura to your school to your ECE service or wherever you go with some new ideas with a um, determination and how you might consider those relationships you have within your community, how you might grow those relationships with Aroha with, um, and provide opportunity and space for those conversations to start or to continue those conversations. Make the most of your um, resources you have and if you haven't got them, don't let that stop you because that's what I heard from you, Jonathan isn't going to work we'll find a way we'll make it work yeah. um so thank you thank you for your time this evening thank you for your care and consideration for Māori Tamariki and for all the Tamariki that you work with really appreciate your um mahi both of you thank you for your time tonight and thank you everybody who came and joined the conversation um I'm just going to close now with a short karakia and we'll let you head on your way so um Ko e ki runga, ko e ki raro, e rongo whakairihia ki runga, ki a tina, haumi e hui e taikai. Kia ora tātou. Right, take care everybody. Kia ora.